your hand. I'm going to go quickly into the word of God. Give me 30 minutes on the clock. Can we stand for the reading of the word? Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 8. I'm going to to the 11th verse. This is the same text that we read last Sunday because I'm finishing up part two. Amen. Of a winner's mentality. And the word of God says, Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel. Why do you come out and line up for battle? Somebody say, this is how I fight my battles. <laughs> Am I not a Philistine and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will, come, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. I know that's a very unique place to end the scripture, but I need you all to hear that because some of you get terrified just simply by the threat. I have to end. I can't go to the victory yet because I need to stop here. Because we know the end of the story, David defeated Goliath, but a whole troop ran away and was afraid. And I believe Tasha was talking about the military at Acceleration Church. Not one will be left out. I don't want Pastor Dion I just to be the Goliaths. But we want the whole army to win. It's not enough for me to have faith and not be scared because I ain't never scared. But I want to teach and equip you how to have fortitude and fearlessness and have a winner's mentality that no matter what threat comes your way, what battle you're in, you have a winner's mentality and you become victorious before you ever step into the battle. Oh, come on and shout, I have a winner's mentality. Come on, you may be seated in the presence of God. I see some people walking in. Ushers, help them out. Find some room. Amen. There are some seats in the center. Amen. On last Sunday, I started this sermon, A Winner's Mentality, and I talked about the importance of having a winner's mentality. Why? Because you are a winner. If you did not know it before, I am telling you today, you are a winner. If you forgot, those of you that are online, I am reminding you today that you are a winner. Now, I'm going to do my best not to preach to y'all. I want to teach you. Last Sunday, I was supposed to teach and I started preaching, but I really want you all to get this. Please hear what I'm saying. If you get what I'm telling you, if you get these principles, it will change your outcome. How many of you have been in battles before? Raise your hand. So I don't have to define battles. Y'all know what battles are. You don't have to be in the military to go through a battle. Who's ever lost a battle? Raise your hand. Who's ever won a battle? Raise your hand. Was there a difference in your approach? I'm giving you some principles today that will help you win your battles. It will help you decrease the battles that you have because you have a winner's mentality. You won't see battles as battles anymore. You'll see them as strength opportunities. Oh, come on, say something. Who are my winners at? Because every battle that I lost, I learned something. <laughs> every failure I had, I learned something because I have a winner's mentality. So last Sunday, I told you all, in order to have a winner's mentality, you must think like a winner. Say, think like a winner. It's important that you get your mind in alignment, y'all. You have to get your mind in alignment with your dreams. You got to get your mind in alignment with your body. You got to get your mind in alignment with where you are going. Every time a negative thought comes up, you got to tear it down by the blood of Jesus. When you're going after something, you got to get rid of the if words. You got to get rid of the doubting. You got to get rid of the self-defeat. No longer be a victim. You got to be victorious. I choose my friends by how they think. If I I have friends and all they think about is negativity and all they think about is bad news and all they say is what if, what if you can no longer be in my space because you're messing up my mental. I need some friends that say I don't care what it looked like over the mountain baby you can get over it. I don't care what you're going through right now you're going to be victorious. There's no if, there's no plan B. Your plan A going to come through. I need some writers to be my friend that know how to win. Get your mind in alignment. Get 
your mental right. If you got to sit down and put your head on your wife's lap and say, baby, this happened to me when I was four years old. Do what you got to do to get your mental right. If you got to come to the altar ten times, come to the altar. I'll keep praying for you, baby. I won't give up on you. I won't let you lose. But we will rid you of any spirit that's tormenting your mind. Get your mind right. Watch what you're letting come into your ear gate and your eye gate. That is a pathway to your mental. I'm teaching you something. My husband and I are the same way. We certain things we will not watch on television. Certain music we won't listen to. I don't care how popular it is. I don't care how many viewerships it get. We protect our mind space. I told you last week that you can do more with your mind than you can do with your hands. Some of you are sitting on million dollar ideas. I prophesy. Some of you are sitting on multi-million dollar businesses. Some of you are going to be billionaires. I have no doubt in my mind. I've already told God, we want three billionaires produce out this church. We want hundreds of millionaires produce out this church. I told God I want politicians coming out of Acceleration Church. I want CEOs coming out of Acceleration Church. I want C-suite executives coming out of Acceleration Church. And I'm not coming off of it because all I do is win. So if I'm praying for it, I'm believing for it, one of y'all better hold your hand and say, Pastor, one of them going to be me. <laughs> Come on. You got to think like a winner. You got to get your mind in position for where God is taking you. You got to see it before you see it, says Pastor Dio. My husband and I met right here in this church before it was Acceleration Church in this building. I was just sharing with Serena. We would go right down there to the Jamaican spot. He said, let's go get a patty. He saw me on church all sudden. Hey, woman of God. <laughs> I know you ain't let me take you out to dinner yet, but we can just go grab a patty. Y'all can learn some stuff from Pastor Dio. I'm like, well, it is just a patty. <laughs> we get there. Let's get some carrot juice. <laughs> but we would leave. We would go there, and once we started dating, after we would leave the Jamaican spot, he would say, follow me, I want to show you something. He said, I'm taking you not to my house, so y'all get it messed up. He knew taking me to his house wasn't going to win the battle. Y'all better say something. And he cute, and I'm cute, he fine. I was real fine back then, y'all. <laughs> So taking me to his house, we were going to lose some battles. Y'all, hey. So he said, I'm taking you somewhere. Follow me. And he hooked up with some realtor. And we would get to go into these million-dollar neighborhoods. Listen to what I'm trying to teach y'all something. At this time, he was in a three-bedroom townhouse. And I was in a three-bedroom townhouse. But he had some realtor. They would meet us at the gate. Oh, he had this thing planned out, y'all. Get to the gate. They say, oh, you're Dio. Come on through. <laughs> he couldn't afford the house he was showing me at that time. <sighs> but we had to see it before we saw it. Watch what you let get into your eye gates because it may come to pass. So instead of putting, come on, instead of putting negativity in your eye gate that will come to pass, he put positivity. He put me in that status. He put me in a situation uh, that got cold to my eyes and into my mental. And I began to believe uh, that if God did it for them, uh, he can do it for me. Come on, say be careful what you let in your eye gates. Because it will come to pass. So this is your entrance to your mind. And we will ride through these million dollar neighborhoods. He say, one day, baby, I'm going to get you in that house. Say, I'm going to let you pick out what you want. He was in a townhouse. I wasn't, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. At that time, I was making $35,000 a year. He was probably, you already at six figures. You know, you always ahead of the game. But he wasn't in a place that he could afford that. But can I tell you, even when he proposed to me, he took me to one of those neighborhoods. He said, I asked you to be my wife. He said, one day, I'm going to get you this. We begin to think like winners. I'm trying to teach you something. 
See, some people don't want to be blessed. Some people question prosperity. They question, listen, I've been broke and I've been wealthy. There's a big difference between the two. I like that when my family calls me, I can say, hey, give me your cash app. I like that if the church needs lights, we don't have to come and beg and come up with numbers and say God said something he didn't say. We can just write a check. Come on. I like getting a good word and sowing into some good ground and not have to worry about can I sow this seed. I like being able to expose my children to things I was not exposed to. I like being able to go shop for my husband and surprise him with Gucci. I like being able to walk in the bank with this confidence that I have five bank accounts so I need this and I need you to move quickly. I like being in a position uh, that's called kingdom mindset. Uh, I don't like calling the bill collector and saying I can't pay this month, uh, but I like being able to enjoy the goodness uh, and what God has set forth with us, uh, and I will never apologize. Uh, and those of you that are crazy enough, you better jump on my back, because uh, I'm going to take you to the land of milk and honey, uh, the same land uh, that some people did not enter in, uh, but somebody was crazy enough for Joshua. Uh, I'm trying to get you to think like a winner so you can become a winner. It starts in your mind. Some of you are sitting on multi-million dollar ideas. God said you don't have to ask your family for nothing. You don't have to go back to that ex for nothing. I had family members that would tell me, use your body to get money. I never had to do it because I used the word of God. Woo! Some of you are crawling back into some beds because you broke. I'm not going this way because God is leading me. Some of you are back in relationships that you left because you need them to financially sustain you. The devil is a liar. God is your provider, not a man, not a woman, and definitely not somebody else's husband or wife. You can clap. You can clap. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. Say ouch. Clap. Some of you got to be nice to the people that were horrible to you. You got to be nice to the people that spoke down on you, that didn't believe in you because you have not went out and operated in the principles of God. God is saying some of you are sitting on your wealth why because it's here but you haven't produced listen to me this is my challenge for you this week you know every time i preach i give you a challenge by next sunday i want you to simply get a piece of paper and a pencil i know people don't use that stuff anymore but i'm giving you the word of god and i want you to write your vision and i want you to make it plain I want you to sit somewhere by yourself. You can go to Starbucks. You ain't even got to buy coffee. You can go sit in a library. You don't have to buy books. <laughs> or you can just send your kids to a babysitter and sit in your house by yourself. <laughs> and I want to challenge you to put some worship music on. <laughs> I want to challenge you to put some gospel music on. <laughs> and set your clock. Set yourself an alarm clock for two hours. <laughs> some of you need five. <laughs> but at the minimum, two hours. And sit with a piece of paper and a pen. <laughs> and say, God, take what you put in here <laughs> and help me put it down on paper huh? because I believe there are some inventions in this room. Huh? I believe there are some ideas in this room. Huh? I believe there are some businesses in this room. Huh? I believe somebody has the cure to COVID huh? but you gotta pause for a moment so he can speak. Pastor Diane I met in this church. Our pastor at that time was Dr. Dave Martin. And I used to be his executive assistant, as well as the youth leader. And a group of us traveled to Tallahassee for a talk show that he was on. I'm going somewhere. Keep what I just said about writing that vision down. Don't lose it, because I'm coming back. He said, I can't wait to introduce you all to the owner of this television station. He owned a Christian television network. network. We pulled up to what I thought was the studio. I said, oh, this studio, my God, this is a huge studio. He said, no, this is his house. Christian man speaking in tongues filled with the Holy Ghost. Older white gentleman. Every chance I get, I 
want to see what's in here. I said, how did you get your wealth? Just one quick question. How did you get your wealth? Six words. He said, I went into prayer. I told my team, shut down all my speaking engagements. I need to pray for 40 days. He said, in those 40 days, God showed me something. <laughs> that there was this particular type of phone coming out by Erickson. He said, I started doing the research and what God was showing me was right. It was in the making a cell phone that you can talk when you're not at home. And I said, God, he said to God, why are you showing me this is already in the making? The Lord said, there's parts of it that people will need to buy. One of them is a battery. He said, and all these ideas start rushing in those 40 days I just prayed. And he said, I started researching batteries, cell phone batteries. Who's working on the cell phone batteries? He said, and immediately when I found the company that was doing it, I bought stock. <laughs> when nobody had purchased the cell phone yet. That one stock made him a multimillionaire. The idea came from, some of y'all are sitting on it. Can I give you another one? I was in the makeup store. I don't even, this is any of my notes, but somebody needs to hit us. One of y'all pulling on this for some reason. Y'all better hear God. This needs to serve as your confirmation. I was in the makeup store buying makeup, and this young lady was in the store. She said, oh, you're so beautiful. I do makeup. I said, oh, my gosh, I've been looking for a makeup artist that can come to my house. This was about 10 years ago. That can come to my house and do my makeup because I'm speaking, and a lot of times I'm blah, 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 blah. She said, no problem. I would love to. Here's my website. Got her information booked her to come to our home she was working on my makeup and I said how far did you travel because at that time we were living in Lake Mary she said oh, I stay right here because we lived in Aliqua she lived in Heathrow I said oh you live in Heathrow awesome she said yeah I'm in college I do makeup on the side but I also help my family's business I said oh your family has a business she said yes yeah. she said we own about five houses in Heathrow <laughs> We own about three in Aliqua, and if you all know Heathrow and Aliqua is a very affluent neighborhood that's predominantly Caucasian. This is a black girl. I said, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. I said, what does your family do? She said, we work for my grandma. <laughs> oh, y'all better catch this. I said, you work for your grandma? She said, yes. She said, my grandmother, you may not know this, but she said she invented something that churches use all the time. I said, well, what? She said, yeah, you can look her name up. She showed me the website. Everything is accurate. I said, how did she come up with this idea? She said, my mother was an usher at this church for 30-some years. She said, as an usher, she'll have all us in church. She ain't played. My mama was the best usher. She said, but as the usher, ever so often, the pastor would tell the ushers to go in the cleaning room and clean and get ready with grape juice and pour it in glasses and get the crackers and chop the crackers up and as a usher she had to hand out crackers and grape juice somebody gonna get this she said and she kept looking at what they had to do and it kept in her mind we got to do it. it's a better way to do this she kept telling the usher it's a better way to do this and she said a mission trip came up and when they went on the mission trip they went to a country that did not have sanitation but the pastor wanted to provide communion for those. And again, she was cutting up the crackers and the grape juice. She said, all this contaminates. There must be a better way. <sighs> she went to praying. God gave her an idea. Here's a better way. Can one of y'all go grab one of my, my, at the thing, communion? God gave her an idea and downloaded on her. Said, there's a better way to serve communion without have to worry about contamination. Do you all know those communion cups that has juice in it with the crock on, everything is already sealed? That was made by a black woman. Y'all better give God praise. She invented the idea that God gave her because she did not want to dirty what people were about to drink. So now you have the seal on the juice and the seal on the crackers, which not only made her a multimillionaire, but it built legacy for her whole family that her grandchildren work for her today because she invented something that was in her mind. She wrote it out and she began to research and God opened the doors. Not only do they own homes, they own warehouses all over the globe because people in other countries that don't have the proper contamination have to use her invention. Say, think like a winner.
your challenge. Sit down. Take a couple hours. Write it down. And let God give you the idea. The last thing I said to you all is you got to talk like a winner. I told you that last Sunday. Start talking. Say all I do is win, win, win no matter what. Say it. Say it again. I heard some doubters. I heard some people that really kind of believe but don't really believe it. I heard some people that was uncomfortable with saying it because it sounds arrogant. I'm on your row. I heard some people that's been beat down so much and lost so much they're afraid to say all I do is win. They definitely don't want to type it and put it on social media because people are going to look and see for them to fail. Some of you are dealing with PTSD. Some of you are dealing with spiritual PTSD, post-traumatic stress, because you failed in your last season. You don't want to believe that in this season you can actually win. Some of you are dealing with the old way that I lost three times. I'm afraid I'm going to lose a four time. Come on. But you got to say it until you begin to believe it. If you you don't believe it nobody else will now this time I want you to say it with authority I want you to say it with confidence and I want you to shake off PTSD and say I don't care if I lost last year but this year all I do is win 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 no matter what said now this time can I get some people to cross their shoulders come on fold your arms do it with a little authority huh? who got some swag on it huh? come on I need you to say it with confidence huh? if you online baby look at my eyes huh? I am telling the world huh? all I do is period put a period on it the sentence is over ain't nothing else to say all I do with God on my side huh? with God as authority huh? when I walk in the room succeeded they are amazed that I'm still delivered they are amazed that my marriage still working they are amazed that I've been set free come on because all I do hey come on and shout for the Lord come on and shout for the Lord come on and shout for the Lord feels uncomfortable but that's okay you'll get used to it come on sit down I'm gonna help you get used to it real quick got about eight more minutes I'm gonna help you get used to it because winners think like a winner they talk like a winner but I'm gonna help you get ready for the win y'all ready they train like a winner they train like a winner. Come on, this mama talking now, this pastor talking now, this your coach talking now, open your ears. Come on, you got to train like a winner. You must start training now for your success. You must start dressing now for where you're going. You got to start letting go some stuff and adding some stuff to your schedule huh, because it's time to start training huh, like a winner. Some of you are waiting on God huh, to get you over the victorious line. Huh. Some of you are waiting on God for you to win in a particular area, but God has said, I'm waiting for you to prepare because some of you can't carry the weight that comes with this success. Some of you can't carry huh, the glory that comes with this anointing. Huh. Some of you can't take the heat that comes with this light. Huh. But I guarantee if you start training now, you'll be ready for the win. The Olympics just closed out in Tokyo. I'm going to show you some pictures really quick. You got my pictures ready? I want you to see, come on, that's backwards. I want you to see them training for the win. And you'll see in the pictures when they train for the win before she got to this point, this is what she was doing at home. Can you go to the other picture? She was outside in position getting ready for the win. Come on, show me the next picture.
You see, she's out of her yard, but she's in position before she gets to Tokyo. Show me the next picture. He's in his backyard in a bathtub. This is out in the UK. Their bath, their pools are not like ours. So he bought the largest pool setting he could find. So you'll see there's a rope on the end of his ankle because he's strengthening his legs. He's training for the win. Can you show me him at the Olympics? Same position, and he won a gold medal. Come on, show me the next picture. These are Olympians. These are people that understand in order for me to get there, I have to train where I am. That I can't be in an Olympic-sized pool, but I can bathe in my tub. This young man outside in a deserted area at a, at a, at a gymnasium outside, a basketball court. But even at the basketball court, he's testing out his strength. See, sometimes you can't wait till you get to the Olympics. You can't wait till you get to that corner office. But you got to start preparing where you are. Show me the picture. He became a gold medalist this year because he was at home training when he could have been doing other things. And then he knocked the person out. Why? Because his feet was already trained to hit his competitor. You got to start training now for where God is taking you. Come on and say train like a winner. Don't wait for the promotion. Start preparing for the promotion. Don't wait until you're a business owner to buy a suit. Go buy a suit now. My first suit came from Goodwill. My next suit came from Ross. Now I can go to Nordstrom's. I did not wait until I was able to go to Nordstrom's. I did not wait. I wore my first suit when I was 16 years old. They would joke at me on high school, why are you always dressing up? Because I know where I'm going. Why are you always in heels as I'm getting these feet ready? Why you gotta always wear a suit? Because I'm gonna be an executive. When I was in high school, y'all don't know. When I was in college, I was running for the president of the SGA. I was running for the president of the Black Student Union. I was majoring in criminal justice and African-American studies because I saw where I was going. Prepare. Train. Get in position for the win. Come on, I'm going to be on television one day. And the times that I've been on TV, thank you, Mary. She keeps saying, pulling your head down, Pastor. Y'all, they want me to look decent. <laughs> Prepare for the win. <laughs> I've been on television shows as a guest. <laughs> it's going to make y'all laugh. And they say that tele TV put 10 pounds on you, and they absolutely right. And I said, look, I can't go nowhere looking like an oompa loompa. <laughs> now, this just me and me. Now, nah, look. So I'm a guest, but if one day I'm going to be a host. One day I'm going to be a commentator. I'm preparing now. I teach myself how to enunciate my words. I used to say scrimp and street and fennel. But I begin to teach myself how to pronounce my words and say my words so I can be invited to tables that my vernacular would have kept me away from. I begin to read books to learn words like omniscient and understand KPIs and metrics and I had never done them before because I was preparing for where God was taking me. If I'm going to go in the boardroom, I need to walk in and not have that door closed because I'm not prepared for what they're going to talk about. You got to start preparing now for the win. Y'all see my videos. I'm in the gym three times a week. I don't have time for the gym. I find time because I say I got to get a little bit less because I'm going to be on TV one day. In addition to that, I got tired of breathing real hard after walking up my stairs. Bella called me upstairs one day and I ran up them stairs, you know, running. True, 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 true. And I got to say, give my mama a chill. <laughs> I was breathing hard. Whew. And I say, how am I going to have a book scheduled to speak? I can't even get my breath walking upstairs. I got to condition my lungs. Y'all better say something. I'm going to pray over them, but I'm also going to condition them because I know where God is taking me. This was last year. I got in the gym. I started getting my breath right. I started learning how to inhale and how to practice because where God was taking me. And this year, I'm booked for the rest of the year. I did not wait to get booked. I started preparing for the win. Come on. Some of you got to start getting books about your lawn service. 
Some of you got to start taking certifications on hair care. Some of you got to start researching how to have an e-commerce business. Some of you got to start looking at how do I publish my first book. Some of you got to start researching your industry, the types of food that you sell, the type of pamphlets that you have, the jewelry that you make, whatever your gift is, start preparing for the win. Start researching. What do I need to get a business loan or a business credit? You need an EIN and a DUNS account. You need to know this stuff. You got to start looking at your wardrobe. Walk in your closet today, men and women of God, and say, does my wardrobe look like an executive? Does my wardrobe look like I'm just going to play some games? Come on, do I have a suit in here for the business meeting and the business call? See, God will open the doors, but you got to be prepared. And I don't want him to open the doors and they shut closed because you're not prepared. Learn the etiquette so when you're invited to dinner with that millionaire that's ready to write the check, you'll know what fork to pick up. Y'all better say something. You'll know why you have three forks. You'll know why you have two spoons. You'll know why they took the old knife to bring you a new knife. You'll know which glass to pick up. Is it on my right or my left? Y'all, come on. I'm trying to take you somewhere. You got to train for the win. Do it in your house. Take out four forks, Google it, and practice at your kitchen table with your three chairs because soon you're going to be at a five-star restaurant negotiating deals. Train, say, I'm going to train like a winner. I'm going to close in this. Ursula, I'm going to go to my last point. Terrify like a winner. Say, terrify like a winner. In the text I read you earlier, I want to bring up the last verse or the first verse. Second verse, verse 9. 1 Samuel 17, verse 9. It said, if he wins, this is Goliath talking, in a fight against me and kills me, we will be your servants. But if I win against him and kill him then you will be our servants it's real simple when you go into a battle your goal is to win because if you lose you become a slave to that thing but if you win that thing becomes a slave to you let me give you an example I went into a battle against suicide if suicide would have won I would have been a slave to it but because in that moment with the help of God I defeated suicide suicide is now a slave to me so when I see that spirit hovering over you, I have the authority and the power to defeat it because I defeated it years ago. Do you understand? Those of you that were addicted to drugs, you now have the authority to walk down OBT and grab a drug addict uh, and look that spirit in the eye and say, I rebuke that addiction off of you uh, because I defeated it years ago. Uh, come on, some of you that came through some stuff, uh, you can call it off the life of other people. Uh, my husband and I defeated poverty and generational curses. Uh, that's why we look you in the eye on the camera and in the house and say, yes, uh, we defeated it. I see it trying to hover on some of you. But we're locking it down because it is a slave to us. Terrify like a winner. Get up. Walk in your authority. Walk in your confidence and terrify like a winner. Prayer is a weapon that will terrify the enemy every time. Just the other day, I posted it and I put it in my prayer group. We just found out that YouTube is now blocking videos that says you can be healed through prayer. If prayer was not a threat to the enemy, he would leave it alone. 
but because prayer is a threat to the enemy, his imps, his demons, uh, and his whole legion of angels that got thrown out of heaven with him. Uh, he's afraid of prayer. That's why he took it out of school so you wouldn't have it over your children. Uh, that's why now he's trying to take it off the airways, and I may get muted now, but I'm here to tell you that prayer worked 10 years ago, uh, and it still works today. Uh, I am here to tell you that, yes, uh, prayer can heal your body. Uh, I saw prayer heal my sister uh, when the doctors and science uh, said, pull the plug. Uh, she's going to be dead. Stand up. Uh, she's still here today, not because of the doctors, uh, not because of the science, uh, because they said, pull the plug. Uh, that was over 20 years ago. Uh, but prayer rushed in uh, and healed her body. My OBGYN said, you have five fibroids. And if you have children, it's going to be complications. I said, can you remove them? He said, it's too many, they too big. Honey, I found a church service where I knew a woman that know how to pray a prayer. I found Mother Moore. I stood in the line. I said, will you lay hands on me? Because the doctors say they can't remove them. And if I have kids, I was single at that time. It's going to be painful. They say it's five of them. They're causing me some pain some issues. She took her hands. She laid hands on me. I felt the power of God. And can I tell you, I went back to that doctor. The doctor said, I don't see him anymore. Turn over. I don't see him anymore. Get a nurse. Double check this machine. I don't see him anymore. Terrify like a winner. Make them confused. Make them amazed. Make them shout, terrify with your prayer, terrify with your authority. You won't silence me. Block my video, I'll send you a text. Block my video, I'll find a microphone. Because it was prayer that healed me. It was prayer that healed my best friend that after a car accident, they made surgery because the back of her neck, her disc were completely separated. Come on and hear me today. Talking to you online while I can. Her disc were separated. They said, we got to go in and mend the bones back together. But once we do it, she won't be able to turn left. Get ready, praise team, and she won't be able to turn right. Says she won't be able to hold her head down. She won't be able to hold her head back. This was over 20 years ago. We got the prayer team on the phone. I said, I need y'all to pray. That's my best, best friend. And I don't want her to not be able to have motion. Come on, she needs some motion. Can we pray? We didn't know exactly what to pray for because we weren't the doctors and we didn't know the science. I'm going to say that again because we weren't the doctors and we did not know the science, but we knew God. That next morning, they were rolling her into surgery. Those of you nurses know right before surgery, they got to do another x-ray to make sure things ain't gotten worse. They did an x-ray on her. Her mama called screaming. She said, oh my God! Her discs are in alignment. The doctors called it. The doctors called it. The doctors called it a miracle. And the other doctors ran into her room to see the miracle because there's something called prayer that will do more than any prescription drug, any surgery, any science, and any doctor. Don't get me wrong. I know some people need doctors. I get that, baby. But when you hit the wall and it's nothing they can do, you better call on prayer and you better terrify every witness, terrify every doubter, terrify like a winner through your prayer. Prayer works. And as long as you're a member of Acceleration Church, you're going to get a whole lot of prayer, baby. If I can't give you nothing else, I'm going to give you what I know works. Jesus, prayer, and the Word. Say, I have a winner's mentality. Terrified like a winner. 
get your prayer life back on track. You ain't terrifying nobody if you're not praying. You're not making anybody scared if you're not praying. The enemy is knocking on somebody else's door because you sleeping while they praying. Y'all better say something. Terrify like a winner. Get back to your prayer life. If they shut it down on YouTube, don't shut it down in your house. Terrify like a winner because we all need prayer. Come on, say a winner's mentality. Think like a winner. Talk like a winner. Train like a winner. Terrify like a winner. As I go into this altar call, I didn't have time to go through this point, but I feel the Holy Spirit nudging me, and I have to be obedient. The last thing, last point he gave me late last night, he said, baby girl, don't forget to tell them to think, T-H-A-N-K, like a winner. To think, T-H-A-N-K, like a winner every winner when they get an award there we go they get the golden globes they say i want to thank when they win the oscars they say i want to thank when they get on the olympic stand they say i want to thank when they received something great and they defeated their naysayers and they defeated their doubters and they defeated their enemies and they defeated their competitors, the very next thing that you hear is I want to. Don't ever forget to thank God. He's the reason that you are victorious. He's the reason that you will be victorious. And we must never forget. Come to the house of God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Psalms 100. And enter his courts with praise. We're here to thank him for the win. Come on, stand to your feet. If you want at something in your life, stand to your feet all over this place. And we're going to thank God for the win. The wins we've had. The wins we're about to receive and the wins that's coming down the line. You are a winner. I want you to thank him for the win. All eyes closed, all head bows, bowed. I want to pray with you today. Those of you that have felt defeated in your prayer life. You felt defeated on the battlefield. You may have felt defeated in your marriage, in your finances, in your mind. Defeated against that addiction, defeated against the past, defeated against that relationship, defeated in your family, whatever that may be. I want to remind you today that God is victorious. And when you place him properly in your life, he'll ensure that you win I want to pray for you today if that's you just come to the altar the altar is a sanctified place go ahead and sing worshipers come to the altar when you come just spread out but I want to pray for those that have felt defeated and you're ready to feel like a winner you feel defeated but you're ready to see a victory come on make a straight line and spread out ushers help me give yourself some space Come on. I wanna see you ready to see a victory? I wanna see a victory. You ready for the enemy to be defeated? Come on, come. Spread them out. If it's you, come up front and spread out. Those that are helping me pray, you stand just a little bit back so I know the difference. We should have one line of those that need prayer. Come on, worship. Come on, there's more space over here. Come, baby, come over here. How are you? Come on. Amen, 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 amen. After today, I decree and declare 
You'll no longer be defeated. You won't be defeated in your dreams and your destiny. I'm talking to you directly. But you're going to be victorious. You're about to experience victory. Why? Because you've been faithful. And God sees your faithfulness. You're going to win in your home. You're going to win in your family because your family needs to see an example of a winner. And I decree and declare that victory is about to hit your life like never before. I see angels around you. And God said, begin to walk into those areas that he's called you to that fear has tried to overtake you. Because after today, you will be victorious, said the Lord. Put all on him. Come on, come on, come on, minister. For the battle belongs to
just believe. Come on, this is the time that we give. It is your time to do your tithing. 10% of your earnings, I'm trying to teach you how to win in your finances. Doesn't matter how much money come in, 10% goes back to God. The more you give, the more you see increase. Your finances will stop doing this if you stop giving like this. Give like this and your finances will match it. Come on, it's time out for us losing in our finances. God wants us to win in every single area. Come on, this is your time. Grab your phone. Don't get off this live until you place your seed in the ground. Grab your phone and begin to prepare your seed. Pray about what you should give. Your tithe, you know it's already 10%. And we're so thankful for our tithers. It is because our tithers were able to go forth and do the work of the Lord. Get your 10% and put it in the ground. Put it in fertile soil. Get your seed, your offering, and begin to prepare it. And I dare you to write on it. I'm a winner in my finances. Come on, you can give. If you raise your hand and you want an envelope, you can give with cash or check with an envelope. If you have a credit card and you want to give, raise your hand and we'll get an envelope to you. You can give by cash app. Dollar sign accelerate now. Dollar sign accelerate now. That's how I give. That's how people give to me. People hear my messages and they'll just sow a seed directly into me. And I take 10% of it and sow it right back into the church. It's right there. Come on. Be a continual giver. You will continually reap. Come on, you can also give by text to give. If you give by text to give, you can set up recurring giving for your tithe. I'm trying to help you go somewhere. We gotta have a mentality of a winner. Winners give. Winners prepare. Winners train. They train now for the wealth that's coming so they can be continual givers. Come on, while you're giving, we have a video we want to show you. Prepare your seed and I'll come back and pray over it. Bring your attention to this video. What's up, Ursula? Good morning, Jarvis. How Wonderful are you? morning. Beautiful yes. out oh here. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. <laughs> In today's message, a winner's mentality. Pastor Tacoa killed, killed it. Listen, I hope you had your pen, your paper, your tablet, however you take notes. Yes. I hope you took down the points that she was giving today because it was so fire. Yes. Listen, he said it. we're coming to you with less than 60 seconds with the acceleration minutes and go. All right, so first up, you know every week, Thursdays and Fridays are dedicated to our youth. Yeah. Thursdays, dance rehearsals starting at 7 p.m. and Fridays are Friday team. Night Live. Friday every Night Live Friday. every Friday 7 this PM. month, 7 p.m. Yeah. Bring your teens here, it is live. It is so much fun. And then guess what? September 17th? 17th through the 19th, the 19th is our acceleration conference. Listen. Yes. Big hitters, I mean, in business and yes. in ministry, you don't want to miss don't this. Miss so it. listen for the updates yes. and don't wait too late to re wait too late to register. Absolutely. And so before you will be our next testimony this week is Javon Williams. Woo! I had the opportunity of talking with her, and so we're super excited. We hope that this testimony blesses you. Talk to you soon, Accelerator. We'll see you soon. Accelerators. My name is Javon Williams. I'm the owner of Go Go Party Bus Central Florida. I've been an accelerator for over four years. Matter of fact, I started before the church started. I was a part of the strategic uh, planning team and I'm so happy to be an accelerator. I live 
our creed. Everything we touch increases. Not only do I own my party bus business, which I'm on right now, I also own my real estate company as well as a construction management company. So I have three companies that I'm actually juggling now as well as an eight to five. And that's all because I've come to church, I actually give my time to church as well, and to be to live and to believe in being an accelerator. I truly believe that everything I touch increases as well as God is um, accelerating favor all around me. I would encourage anyone that's coming to church to think about being belo belonging to someone or belonging to a family that will embrace you, empower you, and encourage you as you are going on. If that's starting a business or going back to school or even just getting married or just doing something different, this church has it all. It is a one-stop shop. I couldn't have made a better decision than to become an accelerator. Say I got it. 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 Say it. Come on, say I got that V I C T O R Y. I got no reason to fear. I got Jesus on my side. I got that. excited um, so we got a couple quick announcements here thank you so much musicians so a couple quick announcements I really want to make sure I spend some time on this so first of all can you put your hands together for such an incredible message today um, listen y'all uh, some of what she is sharing such as the innovation the idea of putting this together these are the kind of things that we're going to be unpacking during the Acceleration Conference 2021. Come on, somebody. This is a big, big deal. Someone say it's a big deal. Uh, I've, I've, I've spent uh, over 20 years really trying to understand and obsess over what, is, what it takes to really become an accelerator. Come on, somebody. 
and, 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 it's, and it's come through a lot of pain. It's come through homelessness. It's come in trying to understand how. In, have, has anybody ever been stuck before? Like you feel stuck in life. Like you're, you're trying to move, but you can't necessarily get it right. Am I, the, am I the only one? Right, right. Like you feel like how in the world do I come become unstuck? There's been times that I had to reinvent myself. I can, the, the story of my life has been one that you would think has been great because of what you see today. But what you see today is literally only a byproduct of my faith in Christ and then my investment in self. Like, like uh, my wife would tell you, and, 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 I, and I appreciate, you know, her, her, what she shares, and sometimes I get a bit bashful, but, but uh, I'm very, uh, I try not to invest or spend too much money in things that are unnecessary. Can I talk about this for a couple minutes? Like, I, I, just, I just don't. Like, I, like I'm not, I'm not uh, according to the level of uh, income that God has allowed me to produce, I spend a fraction of that. Can I talk about it? You, you, like, I really, this is very important, y'all, because a lot of times what happens is our income begins to increase and so do your expenses. So you start spending at the level of your income. And then you're, you're essentially just repeating where you were in the last stage. And, and you're wondering why I have more money coming in, but yet I'm still just spinning my tires. It's because you have been introduced to a new level, but yet you're still having the old mentality. Right? It's, it's, it, 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 this is what happens because it, <laughs> you, you, you can get a new wife but if you're still thinking like the old man that you used to be that's going to be a temporary situation and it's also vice versa you can get yourself a new husband but if you're still thinking and operating the way you used to when you were single that's not going to last too long are you with me and so as we transition from, mo from moment to moment, like the Bible says, from glory to glory, it's important that we also have different tools and frameworks in our tool belt. Amen. Are y'all with me? And so I was going with this because um, I invest more in books than I do on clothes. The majority of my clothing, and I'm telling on myself right now, is, is very inexpensive clothing. Now, every once in a while, I'm going to spoil myself when I buy a little something, something. After I bought my wife seven pair of red bottoms, I figured let me buy one pair. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and, and so I get it, right? right? I, I'll make these investments here and there, but I'm more interested in investing in my mind than on my clothing. And a lot of people, a lot of you, are more focused on putting money on what's on you versus what's in you. And then you wonder why we notice one more than the other. We'll notice how good you look, but we can't notice how intellectual you are. <laughs> you know, I, got, I can't. <laughs> Someone said, ouch. Uh, it's, 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 it's serious, y'all. And, and, and so what we've done here, what, this is our very first, our very first acceleration conference and and the the heart behind this is to really elevate the thinking and the actions of everybody in attendance it's going to be a three-day event someone say three days on Friday one of my dear mentors spiritual general he's gonna come in here on Friday night and I promise you he is going to preach the paint off the walls. You better be here, get here early to get a seat. Make sure you bring your friends and family because it is going to be absolutely insane. Friday night, 7 p.m., you want to get here early. That's when we get it kicked off, amen? Then Saturday, so I'm going to say Saturday, is the Acceleration Mastermind. Now, there's a fee for Saturday. 
Amen. There's a fee for Saturday because of the level of investments that we've had to make to even make it happen. Some of you may know of him already, uh, but one of the speakers who's going to be unpacking brilliance, oh my God, and how to activate brilliance in your life and actionable framework to take with you is none other than Simon Bailey. Simon Bailey has videos that have gone viral, over 100 million views, literally, because of the level of intellect that this man has. Listen, y'all, I'm not trying to, we're not, you know us not to be the traditional type of pastors. We're going to bring some high firepower with you. You, you. you get what I'm saying? We're going to bring caliber here. So Simon Bailey is going to be with us. He charges $25,000 per keynote. Got quiet. No exaggeration. $25,000 per keynote. He's going to be here with us. Jill Hellman, one of the most sought after, hear me well, one of the most sought after innovation experts in the world who charges between twenty-five dollars to $50,000 for one hour is going to be uncovering a workshop here. She, she, she's, she's not a Christian, if you would. She believes in God, but she may not be as intimate as we are. But why am I saying that? Because we have to get outside of the four walls. I'm, I'm trying to elevate. See, people for so long have thought that kingdom and marketplace are two different things. Even I myself had had this wrong understanding that ministry and marketplace are two different things. They're really two of the same. But we have been convinced that ministry should stay in its own corner. But the reality is that we as representations of Jesus Christ, we should have access to the information that is changing the world. Come on, y'all. So Jill Hellman is going to be here with us. And, oh my goodness. I'll tell you about that bonus later. It's, going to be, it's, it's just bananas. Jill Hellman is going to be here. twenty five dollars to $50,000 just for one hour with her. She'll be here in the building. I have, these are just dear friends of mine. Brad Pitt. Not Brad Pitt. I don't want you coming here looking for the golden Hollywood boy, okay? Like this, not Brad Pitt. Brad Pitts. He has an S at his end. <laughs> Brad Pitts will be here. He is the chief client officer for the largest bank in Florida. Over $22 billion organization. He's a chief client officer. And he's going to unpack frameworks and strategies on how not to only get customers, but how to keep the customers you get. Which you can utilize in your own business or in your own career. Come on, somebody. Again, I'm trying to elevate. Come on, someone say elevate. I got to elevate so that you can accelerate. An eagle is going to move a lot faster than a chicken. Come on, somebody. Because he has a different perspective than the chicken does. Again, I got to elevate. Someone say elevate to accelerate. So Brad Pitts is going to be with us. I have uh, Roger Parker, a monster when it comes to the human resource world. And it's going to give you frameworks on how to succeed. Not only because, look, he, he, really quick, guys. Uh, a lot of people think that the only way to become wealthy and rich is if you have your own business. But the reality is that you can also be working for somebody and make a bunch of money. I, I personally know people who are working for another company that their bonuses are over $10 million a year. Okay, so let's keep it real. Roger Parker oversees 15,000 employees. And his whole objective is how to raise up the senior executives in his organization. Come on, y'all. Y'all got it. You, 
you, you, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help you connect and make sure that you see what we're building, what we're working on here. Someone say faith and works. We can have the faith components, but we have to have the works. And so that's just partial listing of the people who will be here, of course, and none other than myself as well. Amen. I'm going to be sharing on acceleration frameworks from a business perspective. Every single one of these individuals that I have mentioned, not to be braggadocious, but they've contacted me to help them on ideas on how to build businesses. Because I've had the privilege to build multiple multi-million dollar businesses. I have innovated products from scratch that generated over 200 million plus dollars in sales. So yes, you can see me as the pastor, but I'm also a mogul. Come on, somebody. And, and this is the ministry is about. This is what the assignment on our, on our lives, my wife and I's lives is. And so I'm going to be sharing at least two different components on Saturday. And of course, I'll be closing it out on Sunday. So it's going to be awesome. But here's the deal. Um, we're going to be dropping the link tomorrow. So I'm going to say tomorrow. We're going to be dropping the link for Saturday. Okay. Again, there is a fee for this. Um, just was it two weeks ago? I was in an acceleration, not acceleration, I'm sorry, it was a World Summit Mastermind that I spent over $1,000 to be at. Next Tuesday, I'm going to another copywriter mastermind, which is going to be in Phoenix, and that's cost me $1,500 just for the registration. I'm, I'm trying to tell you again, I invest more in here than I do here. So just in the last four weeks in total, I'm going to be over $5,000 just in investing in this. Trust me, I have not spent $5,000 on this. You get what I'm saying? We can desire something, but success is not in what you desire, it's in what you pursue. And, and, and so we're going to drop the link tomorrow. And I want to make this like crazy value, crazy inexpensive, because I do have a heart to build. And although I know it's worth a thousand plus dollars, we're making our very first one available to everybody. Watch this. For $149. Access to everything that I just shared for $149. Um, but here's the deal even further. For the first 50 people who sign up, that price is actually going to be only $79. Amen? So $79 for the first 50. And of those first 50 who sign up, they're going to have the chance, their name will be put in a hat, if you would, to have a one-on-one -on -one session, you and just this person, for an entire hour. You'll have a one-on-one -on -one session with Jill Hellman, the innovation expert. So your name will be tossed in the hat, and one of those 50 people will also have that bonus. So again, this link drops tomorrow. Um, however, we're wanting to drop this today for you guys. Okay? Someone say thank you. Thank you. Because those 50 spots are going to go, and they're going to go fast. Okay? So today, the team has put up this, uh, this page accelerationconference.eventbrite.com please hear me I do not want to say I told you so I don't, I don't want to have that conversation I don't want to come I told you so, I, I, there's only so many spots that I can do this for then it's going to jump up much, or high, much higher than $79 okay so sign up it's available live right now and here's something else that I'm doing y'all watch this I'm so confident that this is going to blow your mind that I'm putting a 100% money back guarantee. Y'all hear what I just said? 100% money back guarantee. If at the end of this conference you don't feel like your mind has been blown and you have every tool that you need to accelerate in your life, 
both from a business perspective and a personal life perspective. Just hit us up and we'll give you a refund without asking a single question. That's how much I believe in what we're doing. Someone say thank you. Seriously, y'all, because this is not stuff that people do. Like, I could easily charge over $1,000 for this. We're going to have a lot of people in this room. But I'm seriously wanting to equip individuals to truly accelerate in their lives. Amen? Amen. So, again, sign up today. Sign up today because, again, I don't want to have the I told you so conversation. Okay? $79 for the first 50 people who signed up. So, go ahead and do that. And I promise you it is going to blow your mind. So, Friday is free. Make sure you bring somebody with you. This place is going to be packed out. Bring, come in early. Bishop Ronald Gobby is going to preach the house down. And then Saturday we are going to deep dive all up in your mind with regards to acceleration. Someone say thank you. Thank you. Someone say I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. Amen. We ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Just really quick, come on and give God praise for our very first annual Acceleration Conference. The first one will be held here next year. It's going to be at a hotel. It's going to grow. Amen. So be a part of what God is doing. I just want to validate Pastor Dio. I was like, how are we going to pay for all these speakers if you're only charging $79? But I know his heart. He wants to be a blessing to you. He want to take you to that next level. This will be open for business people as well. So this link, we're not posting it on social media until tomorrow. So for this church, register now. You have from now until tomorrow midday before we push it out live because we're transforming this room on Saturday so it'll be like a workshop setting. So we only have enough seats for, for a certain number. We don't want you to miss out. So go to the website and get your registration now. Amen. Come on and stand to your feet as we do our acceleration declaration with authority. We're going to speak like a winner. Amen. Even as Pastor Dyer was giving those, those tidbits about your mind, I heard a uh, winner's mentality part three. Amen for next Sunday. Amen. But we're trying to get you to the finish line. Amen. We want to get you to position yourself for the win. Let's say it together. Amen. I am an accelerator. Everything I touch increases. My blessings are moving at an accelerated speed. God is accelerating favor all around me. We will see you Sunday, winners. God bless you.